Hello everybody, and uh, if you're watching this, please disregard my final four picks video. I was younger and more naive then, but there have two, been two storylines, in my opinion, that have dominated the last month and a half, one being March Madness, and the other one that's been stealing the thunder of March Madness has been NFL Free Agency. So, while Les and Spencer are discussing the final four right now, and I'm sure they're doing a great job because they're both awesome at that, I'm going to talk about a smaller story that I feel is going to have a big impact going into next year's tournament. And that is, and it's something we've already seen, but this year it seems even bigger than normal, is the transfer portal. We stand on the week of the Final Four, both men's and women's, and we've seen a lot, and we look at one of the teams now in the Final Four with, with Brady Manick at uh, UNC. That's a big transfer. Paul Atkinson, who almost led Notre Dame into the Sweet 16, was a transfer player, a grad transfer, mind you, but still a transfer nonetheless. And with the past couple weeks, or this week especially, we've seen a lot of high-profile talent enter the transfer portal. We've had Jalen Llewellyn from uh, Princeton, who almost led his team to the tournament. Last night, Andre Cabello from Illinois announced his intentions to transfer. Xavier Pinson from LSU, Deontay Allen from Kentucky, and perhaps a little bit of a surprise, but not a lot, K.J. Williams from Murray State, and basically the rest of that very good roster, with, the, with their coach taking a new position, have left. And it's just astounding to me to think about what we have now. We have effectively college basketball free agency, and I think it's great. Um, here's why, for example. I know that people are going to tell me that it takes away from the smaller programs, especially with the extra year of eligibility and all that stuff, but we just had a 15 seed make it into the Elite Eight, and we had quite a few upsets in the rounds before that. And yes, I know in a couple weeks, St. Peter's is going to be gutted because Holloway is taking the job at Seton Hall. Many of his players, I assume, will also find new homes across the college basketball landscape. But to me, this is even more interesting now. We're getting to the point where these players moving around like this is more interesting to me than recruiting. And keep in mind, I live in Indiana. I love high school basketball. I love watching the guy who's going to the school I root for, IU. I like watching CJ Gunn play. I like watching guys over in Louisville who are going to UofL play because it is a neat experience to watch these guys and say you saw them in high school when they play for your hometown team. But at the end of the day... Some of those guys just aren't going to pan out. We know for a fact that college basketball and high school basketball are different beasts, and how you adapt to that, it can vary. But if you're telling me that I could get the Defensive Player of the Year from the MAC, who just somehow found a way to shut down Travion Williams and Zach Eady onto my roster, I would take that 10 times out of 10, especially if I was Indiana, really. Uh, K.J. Williams, a player of the year, and an All-American transferring, that's going to make a huge impact for somebody. And, you know, Kentucky's right in the backyard. They've really utilized the grand transfer market. He could be a great pickup for them that may have a tashiway like impact on next season. And that's if they don't get Curbelo from Illinois. And, I mean, it is just fascinating now to see the power that the players have going from one position to another to go from these smaller schools where they do make a name for themselves. I mean, we've heard of these guys. These guys have played impactful minutes, have watched upsets, have done this, that, and the other thing. And we've watched them grow, and we know that they are a bona fide college player. And that's going to make all the difference for your favorite team, and I hope mine, too, in Indiana. So and it's not just the men's side that's doing this either. I look at the women's side, where we have Kentucky. Treasure Hunt is transferring, along with three other stars from Kentucky. Kentucky beat South Carolina in the SEC Championship game. And South Carolina is the favorite to win the women's tournament right now. Or it may be UConn, I don't know. 14 straight Final Fours, what can you do against that? I digress. That's going to be a huge impact move for somebody to get a guard like that who had a game-winning shot against, North, against South Carolina. That's just impressive. And you look at all these guys expressing their player power, and now with the NIL, especially in play, we've already seen Doug Edert got one at St. Peter's. He's going to carry that with him to whatever school he goes to. And let me tell you something, based on memes alone, the market for that guy is going to be insane. It's going to be huge. He may even face a bidding war for his services. And he was a six-man on a low-seeded team in the MAC tournament just a few months ago. 
And now he's a Buffalo Wild Wings spokesperson who's probably going to get wined and dined in a way that NBA free agents do, albeit under the table. And there are just so many high-impact guys that are already floating around. And we're not even done with the college basketball season. We still have a really good blue-blooded Final Four to go, to come. That's going to be really, really good. But I've got my eye, and I'm really excited for this, looking at the guys who have announced they're leaving, looking at the guys who are taking advantage of their rights as players now with the new NCAA. And I know this isn't a popular thing to do with like the older, older college fans, but it's still amazing to me like the liberty that we've given these players and how it's going to make for an interesting product going forward because, you know, just because a guy transfers in, like K.J. Williams goes to Kentucky, so did Oscar, so did Kellen Grady, they still lost to St. Peter's. So you can't tell me that the product is going to go down. I know UConn, and their names are escaping me, had transfers on them. They lost to New Mexico State, which was a homegrown program. Even we had mid-major on mid-major crime with St. Peter's and Murray State, and it would have been San Francisco the other way. So for every Brady Manic, for every, I'm trying to think who that guy, Remy Martin, my preseason pick to win player of the year in the Big 12, he came up as of late. He may win the Final Four most valuable player. Who knows? Sorry, Les. I'm just throwing that out there. For every guy like that, there is no guarantee that the team that you that team made up of transfers is going to be an automatic success, or that they'll find success during the regular season. But it is interesting to me just to watch where these guys go, the impact they're going to have, and what they do. And once again, just to bring the women's tournament into play here, we've even seen that in the women's tournament this year. We had a a player transfer from Iowa to Creighton, who hit the game-winning shot. Over Iowa, the two seed, led by Caitlin Clark, who's one of the most dynamic scorers at any level of the game I've seen, and just beat them, knocked them out of the tournament. So there's there's storylines here. There are there's an established product, and there's instant impact. You know, a college guy, a high school guy, is going to take some time to adapt. There's no guarantee he's going to work into your system. But if you insert a player of the year or a defensive player of the year from a smaller conference, you're going to get better right away. Or if you're a smaller team and you add in a guy like uh, Andre Corbello into your system or Xavier Pinson from LSU, you're going to be really good in your conference. I mean, we've we've already seen it. We've already seen the impact the transfer portal can have. Al Durham, for example. Rob Finnessy's in the transfer portal. He's going to be a huge pickup for somebody. There are a lot of good players this year, more than I can remember in years past, who have been impactful, who have led their team to new heights, and who are just stalwarts on the defensive end, who are going to either be in the transfer portal or are already there. And I think we're entering a new era in college basketball. We were kind of getting there, but I think this year is the year where we, even more so than the year that we're in right now, with, like I said, all the transfers, this focus of COVID and all that stuff, this year is going to be even wilder because of that extra year of eligibility and whatnot, This trend, the new transfer rules. I think we're going to see a fundamental shift in college basketball from recruiting in firms of high school guys because, you know, all those guys are going to go to Duke, they're going to go to UNC, they're going to go to Kentucky, but we're going to see a fundamental shift fairly soon, I believe, in other coaching staffs to coaching, the, to recruiting and mining the transfer portal for instant impact guys who can bridge a couple years while you try to build a program, who can come in and make an instant impact immediately. So that's what I'm really looking forward to over the summer is where some of these big name guys are going to go. Conference players of the years, uh, Big Ten all whatever teams, all defensive teams. There are a lot of moving parts and I am excited and I'm excited to see how coaches will adapt to mining the transfer portal because now we have free agency in college basketball whether we want to admit it or not and it's going to change the landscape of how we view it. So that's my take for this week. Um, Whatever lesson I get back, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of Final Four talk. If you watched this far, thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I don't know if people still do that, because our show is, as the kids say, popping off, and we're going to have a great time whenever we get back together. So thanks for watching. Free agency is here, and your team better adapt.